This is the future of web apps conference in Miami. You can see all the people doing some live tweeting there. And this is Wistic in Manchester. And what I've learned is as an industry, I think we drink a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, like I said, I'm not going to make any grandiose predictions for the future. I thought I'd come in today in the very short time I have, just tell you the five things that I've learned that's most important today. I think the internet has really raised the bar for everybody. Uh, it's just, there's so much junk out there, and so much bad products, but it's just made it so much easier for the good stuff to rise to, to the top. And I think you work in one of the best industries for, for word of mouth, right? Because our, your customers are traveling around with cameras, they're talking to people about what they're doing. So if you get it right, it's such a good opportunity for you to spread your message. And the future, I don't think it's how good your Twitter profile is, or whether or not you have a Facebook and which is, all that kind of stuff is important. It's can you actually create a product that's going to be cooler than your competition, that people actually want to talk about on these social networks. I don't care about this hotel room. I, I don't want to be a Facebook fan page of this hotel. It's, it looks like any other hotel, right? I think once you have your marketing built into your product, then people want to talk about it. That is remarkable. It gets talked about all the time. Now, I'm not saying you need to go out and buy a refurbished 747. <laughs> but if your product itself is not that remarkable, then your marketing can be, your message can be. Uh, this is a Hans Brinker budget hotel in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> himself. And he wrote his website, it's called Dear American Airlines, and he makes a whole bunch of different suggestions on how they should redesign and all that sort of stuff. Your seat is upright and locked. Now it's slightly different. Uh, obviously she's a very attractive woman, so maybe the men would pay a bit more attention to the safety videos, but she's an actual stewardess, and she's now appeared on CNN, on Ellen, and um, she's become like the actual spokesperson for, for Delta, just because that little wave of that finger and you know, they just created something that's a bit different. On YouTube, she's known as Delta Lena, because uh, she looks a bit like Angelina Jolie. Uh, this is a poster campaign that we're doing at Global Gossip next week, so you're getting a first look at it. And um, basically, we came up with the illustrations inside in, in house, but I turned it back to our community, right? I said, you guys are much more funnier than I am. So what I did is I set up a blog, I put the illustrations, and within 48 hours, our customers came up with almost every single tagline that we had. And let me tell you, the stuff they came up with was 10 times better than what I could ever come up with. And it's not just about finding the leverage uh, in your customers, within your staff members, but it's also about finding the leverage in the bigger brands out there. Uh, I love what uh, Virgin Blue is doing. And uh, have you ever even tried to get customer service for Virgin Blue on the phone? It's not, it's not possible, right? But yet, I was able to infiltrate a marketing department with something so boring and 
as simple and mundane as me taking a photo of the boarding gate. Right? I mean, how many of you have Virgin Blue that flies to your destination? Okay, so more than half, right? I mean, don't you think if you have something interesting going on in your Twitter account, that Virgin Blue will retweet it for you and let their customers know about it? 